All right, welcome back. So what we want to do is we want to get a little practice implementing finite state machines. Uh, so I picked a silly example because silly examples are fun. Uh, we're going to make a finite state machine for the video game Bionic Commando. Um, there are many new versions of Bionic Commando, but officially this is the old school Nintendo version. Uh, Bionic Commando, it's like a guy, an army guy with like uh, a grappling hook that may be his arm or maybe a separate grappling hook depending on who you ask. Uh, the problem that we're going to do is one of the things you'd have to do in this game all the time is you would swing like Tarzan like with your grappling hook. So you'd fire it and you'd grab something um, and you know you'd safely be swinging there. Um, but one of the times in this game you had to like let go um, and like fall through the air for a while um, and then like the special time fire the grappling hook um, and grab like a platform and then save your life, right? Um, so the way that spot in the game worked is if you didn't fire in time, you of course hit the bottom of the screen. Um, if you fired too early, um, it took a little while for your grappling hook to recharge and you fell to the bottom there too, right? Um, so what we're going to make is a finite state machine, uh, which is actually, so there's some words in here that say what I just said, right? Um, the finite state machine is something that I made for you because we're going to work on implementation. And it's going to be based on these inputs and outputs. Um, so we're going to have I1 is my, like, let go of the gripper, right? So initially you're swinging from it, um, and you have to have something that says let go to begin your falling process. Um, fire the claw. I like calling it a claw. Really, it's a grappling hook, right? Um, so there's fire the grappling hook, which is, of course, you're going to do while you're falling at the right time. And then there's, you know, reset video game. <laughs> um, because if you die, you want to reset, right? Uh, there's a couple timers. Uh, there's going to be a five second timer. So we're going to fall through the air for free space where we're near nothing. Um, and then there's going to be, after that five seconds, there's going to be a one second window where you're near the platform and you can grab it. So there's going to be two timers involved. Uh, the outputs, we're going to have one output to show when you're falling. Uh, so you're going to be falling, you know, at all these times. Um, an output for victory music if you succeed, or broken leg uh, if you hit the bottom of the screen. I always love in Nintendo, you don't actually like die a lot of the times. You just hit the bottom of the screen and I don't know, then you have to restart. All right, so the finite state machine, it looks like this. Let's just go ahead and make sure that we understand uh, what's going on here. Uh, so there's a reset at the top. Uh, you start off in a nice safe zone. Uh, and then as soon as you release, um, you begin this free fall um, into open space that lasts for five seconds. Um, after that five seconds is up, uh, then you are near the platform. Uh, you are near the platform for one second. If you grab the platform, um, you are successful. Uh, you get out of here. Oh, note by the way that the claw is normally closed. So think of it more as like, pretend like the claw is spring-loaded, um, and that is like the gate that's holding it back, right? And, and as soon as you disable it, you know, it shoots out. Um, so it's a, it's a normally closed, so that's a, when it becomes broken, then, then go to success. Uh, that's the good path, of course. Uh, there are many other paths. Uh, so let's say that you start off safely, you release, and you're in the free fall, and then you decide, oh, I'm just going to fire my claw, like, right in the middle of nothing, right? Um, so then you you join the state, which I said is no claw, so NC is my no claw, no claw free fall. Um, you still, you know, fall for a while, you're still near the platform. The only difference is, like, if you try to fire the claw here, it hasn't recharged yet, or whatever you want to say, um, and you can't actually succeed. So you're near the platform, but with no claw, and then you are going to hit the ground eventually. You still hit the ground at the same time you would have in the other path. Um, it's just here you have, you know, kind of no chance. So that's another path. And then if you hit the ground, uh, you can always reset the game. That's the beauty of video games. You have, like, 50 lives, and you've used one of them, if only, right? <clears throat> the other option is, of course, uh, you free fall, <clears throat> you're near the platform, you grab it, <clears throat> the victory music plays, and then if you want to try again, you can reset and play the game a second time. All right, that's the idea. Let's see if you can do a timing chart. All right, so here's a timing chart. Take a minute and see if you can complete it. All right, I'm going to do it as well. So I won't take forever doing this thing. Uh, so one was free fall, so you kind of start your free fall right there. Um, you free fall for five seconds, um, and then there's the near the platform time. There's really no change at near the platform. You just continue to fall. 
Um, you can see in this first instance, no no claw was fired. Um, so you know you quit falling right there, and then you start falling in there. Let's go and look at these other lines. At no point was victory music ever played. Um, and sure enough, you were going, you were going, you were going, and boom, right there is where you had a broken leg. Uh, and then they reset the game right there. So the first state is the claw was never fired, right? You just you just hit bottom. Uh, the second one, um, it looks like you're falling, you're falling. You fire the claw too early, uh, which is, uh, you know, a, a terrible problem. You try to fire the claw again at the right time, but it doesn't matter. The claw has not recharged. Uh, you quit falling right there. And you can see very similar story. There is no victory music ever. Uh, and at the point where you quit falling, it's because you hit the ground. All right, so a broken leg comes on there. Uh, the last case is the only good one. Uh, you release. Uh, you fire the claw at the correct time. Uh, well done. That's when the victory music starts. Uh, and at no point do you have a broken leg in that scenario. Uh, so hopefully the timing chart is clear to you. Uh, it's kind of the easier part in this one. Um, and the finite state machine has been done. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement it. Uh, and that's the focus of this video lecture. Um, just to kind of help you get you started, I'll say a couple things. Uh, and then and then you can, you can go loose on these things. There are two ways to start um, this finite state machine. You want to put it into state one to begin with. One way you could do it is like we did before. You could say, hey, if, if one is broken and two is broken and three is broken, and you would like to put these all in the same line, right? One broken, two broken, three broken, four broken, five broken, six broken, seven broken. If they're all broken, then set marker one. You can't do that You can because you only have three inputs, right? So you have to kind of like make a temporary variable. Um, so there's like a temporary variable here and there uh, and there. And if all seven of those guys are broken, then the temporary variables will all be high. Um, if all the temporary variables are on, um, then that means you should set marker one. This totally works. I mean, this, this is successful. It's just that it's a lot of markers, right? Um, so this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the other approach uh, that we alluded to last time. Uh, that's only two lines, but two slightly more complex lines. Uh, so let's go ahead and just fire up PicoSoft and we'll do it together, right? All right, so you might have something open in PicoSoft. If you do, you can always save it, right? Uh, so what was that? That was, um, that was my dog, uh, Finite State Machine. <laughs> I remember what that was. Um, and you can say new. Same drill as always. Drag your PLC over. Go to your circuit diagram. Uh, what we're going to do here is kind of weird. Uh, so we're going to add a timing relay. Just to kind of show that it's not part of my normal circuit, I'm going to make it timer 8. Just because it's kind of a weird thing. And, and hopefully nobody else, hopefully we didn't heat up to timer 8. What he's going to do, I, I told you he's weird, right? Um, he's just going to be a single pulse at the start. Um, so he's just going to be on by default. He doesn't wait for any input. Um, and his goal is to set marker 1. Um, and marker 1, um, I'll just call him, this is my, my safe marker. This timer is going to be something we've never used before. It's going to be a single pulse. Um, and so the idea is that this is going to be a single pulse that comes on when the program starts. It's going to be used to set marker 1. You do have to give it a time. Um, I've been using 50 milliseconds. Um, I found that 10 actually isn't long enough and it won't trigger, which is weird. Um, so I think it has to be at least 20. I use 50, right? Um, and just to make sure this thing works, uh, you can go ahead and run your simulation. Um, and you can see that right away, uh, marker 1, safe, it comes on. This line stays high forever, but that doesn't matter because it's done its single pulse of 50 milliseconds. It did its job. It set marker 1. It's done now, right? So that's just fewer lines of code than what we did before. The other thing that I wanted to kind of tell you about that's different on this, then I'll turn you loose, is um, there is this time where there's two things that might be controlling timer one. Um, so it might be coming from the state where you're falling. Um, it might be coming from the state where you're falling with no claw. Um, so there's actually two things that might control marker one. That's fine. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. So um, whenever you have two things that are controlling, it's an or. Um, so if either of them are on, then trigger timer one. 
And then if you're in marker two, when it goes off, do one thing. And if you're in marker one, when it goes off, uh, do something else. Uh, so you can go ahead and implement these guys in PicoSoft. Um, I also grabbed the, um, the way you shift uh, from marker two to marker five. So I actually implemented one of the lines there. I'll go ahead and do that one with you as well. Um, so yeah, we'll help get you started, then we'll turn you loose. So the first line in the, uh, the circuit diagram is if you're in marker one, so you're safe, um, and you have an I1, which is the release. I like to name them in big projects, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to set, and I mean this is a good, good review for what you're doing as well. Uh, so we're going to reset one, and then we're going to set, looks like two. And then two, I'm going to give it a name. So the first time I use it, I give it a name. This one is called Freefall. Names are optional. And so that's a set of marker two. And then I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to go and do the things that were shown on that slide. So there's the first step, uh, where if we're in free fall and we fire the claw, which is a break in this case, uh, then set um, the no claw free fall and reset the uh, free fall. Oh, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go ahead and set that, uh, that up to be a normally closed, uh, just because that's kind of a weird thing on I2. It's a normally closed momentary. The others are correct. All right, I'm going to do some more. All right, so there I've got a few more in. Uh, so if um, I'm in two or five, uh, be hitting the timer. Uh, the timer, as you can see, is an on delay. Most of these, when you're in a state and you're like trying to get kicked out of it, are on delays, right? So it's a five second on delay. Um, if I succeed in getting kicked out of the state and I'm in two, when the timer one goes off, uh, then I reset free fall and I go into near platform. Um, if I'm in five, uh, which is no claw free fall um, when it goes off then I go into no claw um, near platform right so I reset and set all right so I think that's the uh, more than enough to get you started um, see if you can crank out the rest of this guy and I'll do it as well okay so I'm gonna do mine I'll just kind of stop the video between each rung all right, so next I chose to say if I'm in marker three or marker six uh, those guys are driving timer two uh, timer two is a one second uh, on delay. Uh, and then I like to be clever, right? Just to entertain myself. If I'm in three or six when that timer goes off, I don't care if I had the claw or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have hit bottom, so I'm in marker seven hit bottom. Um, whenever you merge them like this, you do have to make sure you reset both because you don't know which one got you there. No harm in the extra resets, right? They don't, they don't do anything bad. All right, so that takes care of that guy. Uh, next, I'm going to go through and do some success stuff. All right, so that was pretty easy. If I'm in marker three, uh, which is my near platform, uh, when I fire the claw, then I reset marker three and I set success. Well done. Uh, next, I'm going to do my resets. All right, so there's my resets. I chose to be clever again. So if I'm in marker four or marker seven when I hit I3, then what I want to do is I want to reset four and seven because I don't know which one I was in uh, and set marker one. Uh, so that's kind of all the uh, transitions. Uh, now we've got to go back and we've got to do some of the actual cue controlling. Let's go ahead and do those real quick. So the first one's kind of tricky here. If I'm in two, three, five, or six, uh, all of those are falling. I kind of like to do this because it's nice to use contactors because if I'm in any of those states, it's on. If I'm not in one of those states, it's off, so it's pretty easy. Then the last two are pretty easy. Uh, if I'm in four, that's victory music. If I'm in seven, uh, that's uh, broken leg. So it's time to go see if we've done anything useful. Uh, so I would go ahead and run this guy. You've probably made some goofs. I may have as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and see what happens when we hit play. So if I hit I1, that's release. Uh, so that should drop me from the safe state into the free fall. Um, after free fall, it should go for five seconds, and that'll be near platform for one. Um, and then it looks like I hit bottom there. Um, and that isn't surprising. I didn't ever click grab. Um, and I can see broken leg is high. I can see that in my screen here. And marker seven is on. I hit I3 to reset it and try again. Uh, I first release. Uh, this time I'm going to try to nail it. Um, as soon as I'm near the platform, it's like I'm near the platform, I clicked it. Sure enough, that put me into success, and Q2 came on. Great. 
Uh, let's try the too early. So I release, and then I fire the claw way too early. Now I'm free falling, but without a claw. Here I'm near the platform. I can try to click. Doesn't matter. I'm hitting the bottom. Uh, cool. Uh, looks like that's uh, successful. Uh, just as fair warning, this is going to be on the quiz tomorrow, right? So make sure you've got this working. Uh, one of the one of the very few questions on the quiz tomorrow is going to be show your instructor uh, your Bionic Commando game. All right, so really the goal is just to get some practice. Uh, hopefully you learn something new in this multiple states controlling a single output. Uh, but other than that, it was really just practice. And hopefully it's kind of interesting. All right, see you next time. Bye.